Hi right, there. So here's my ZMR 250, um, and this is just how it's come from flying. It's still got some big gashes out of these uh, props. Still flies pretty well. Um, and the great thing is with these little quads is uh, I'm not particularly precious about it. I dump it into the ground at least once every flight, and it it just survives. The props break mainly. Um, the Mobius flies off sometimes, but I can always find it. But the one thing that I've done a couple of times, uh, and it seems to be very prone to, is hurt my VTX, which is the most expensive bit. That nice bit of dirt just fell off. The most expensive bit, probably on the quad. Um, and the problem is, uh, me, like many other people, will have the VTX on the back with the skew coming out. Now, you might have it on a 90 degree, which would be more sensible. But whenever there's a landing where it comes in like this, or even backwards, um, it hurts this connection. So this SMA had been ripped off the VTX completely twice, taking the tracks with it, uh, and took an awful lot of effort to repair it with a, a bit of a leg from an old uh, a resistor or something to try and solder the, the bits I needed back together because the tracks had gone. Um, so I was wondering what can I do to try and fix this problem? Because no matter what you do, if you've got it sticking out, no matter how much you protect it, or even manage to poke it through a hole there, as long as you have impact here, it's always going to come back to the SMA, it risks breaking the VTX. Uh, and as you know, if you don't have anything plugged in here, uh, antenna-like, then the VTX will burn itself out. So my VTX certainly isn't working as well as it, it was, because uh, at certain times it's been powered on with no SMA socket on there at all, let alone anything plugged into it. So um, I've decided to go for a three-fold attack. First thing I did was I bought one of these little um, VTXs. This is this is by Skyzone TS5823. It's apparently a 32-channel, 5.8 gig mini, uh, 200 milliwatts, and it is pretty mini. This is what it looks like, uh, and this is it next to a normal immersion RC 600. Um, I've got a couple of reservations about using this. Uh, I've had not bad, not good stories about the compatibility-wise between the 32-channel stuff and Fat Shark stuff. I've got the Fat Shark style uh, receiver in my goggles. Oh, I should say the Immersion RC receiver. Um, and I know that certainly Skyzone goggles had real problems picking up Immersion RC stuff. Um, but there tends to be a problem at range, and because it's a mini quad, I might be going 100, 200 meters, but certainly not into the kilometers, which is where you really find the problems. My other worry is, after saying, oh, I've just got one of these, a couple of guys said, oh, good luck, because mine blew up. Um, but hopefully it won't do that. <laughs> Let's find out. My other part of attack uh, would be to not have a skew like this. I actually found this hanging from a tree by a skew last time. So, I talked to my favourite Welshman, Big Nose 13, who made me a new um, skew with the protective cover. And the most important thing uh, was this little doohickey. The idea of this is this part here will poke up through the top plate, be secured down by the screws, so any impact. Uh, onto the antenna will hit here and won't pass through to this bit that goes under. So it's obviously going to basically fit in under there and poke out through something. It's not a new idea. Um, I've seen other frames actually have these built in, although I've seen some awful long um, pigtails for them. Uh, now I was just about to get the drill out uh, when I took this bit off because I used to have um, a LiPo on there. And what I actually find is there is a pretty big hole there, which you can't see. Well, I can't see on this camera, which I think will probably go quite nicely in there and secure itself. So I'm going to take it all apart, uh, sort this out. I'm going to have to do a bit of soldering here when I take the emotion stuff out uh, and see how it looks and uh, give it a try. Well, with some apologies for my slight continuity error here, different haircut, different t-shirt, different day. Um, Here's the Zillamar now with the installation um, of the extra SMA pigtail. You see, it's um, I had to drill a hole here. This hole 
that existed was a little bit big so we just drilled a nice one and it's pretty neat so that will I see when that's uh, that's taken off it flat it falls down or goes into something pretty flat so you won't have any problems and there is the little sky zone BTX in there now I have flown it and there's two issues as everybody said uh, I had a problem with this little uh, VTX. I had a lot of horizontal lines that suddenly popped up across my picture um, and got really bad. Now the second part of the bad news is I thought I recorded it on DVR. I managed to flick across my... Um, it's basically a lock button which stops any of the buttons from working. So I was pressing record and pressing stop and nothing was happening. Um, so I need to flow this again just to record that to see how it looks. Uh, but what I might do, because this I sold this in, is put a different connector in so I can basically easily hot swap between the immersion VTX and this one. Um, yeah, so let's let's do that and and try and get some actual DVR footage from it now. Well, I managed to go out for another fly and this time operate my DVR camera properly. So again, this is with the Little Sky Zone TZ5823. Um, and if you're wondering if there's a shadowy figure behind me, this is uh, Marcus. Uh, he recognised one of the fields from one of my videos as being local to him, and it turned out he lived just uh, a couple of roads away. He's interested in FPVing, so he was there with his Sky Zone goggles, wanting to have a look what it looked like and, and ask me some questions about my Zim R250. Of course, I ended up having to say that, look, it's not uh, normally like this. This is, this is a, a bit of a dodgy VTX we've got here which has these white lines. Uh, now, if you notice, when we first took off, uh, it didn't look too bad, and for the first minute or so, it looked like it was quite livable with. Um, so I think it's partly noise and partly heat. As the flight goes on, it gets much worse, and the lines get worse and worse. Uh, so it was literally just, I had these flights, and that was just to demonstrate that there was a problem with the actual uh, VTX itself. Which brings us today, about two and a half weeks later from when I started uh, filming. It's not exactly uh, an epic video in terms of content, but it's taken a while since everything kept breaking and having to be retested. So, the ZMR again now has in it my old, get this lined up, 600 milliwatt um, immersion RC, which uh, fits, although it has to come quite forwards, but uh, it works okay. So, I went out today with this. Um, and everything's working great. Uh, in fact, I had a really fantastic day, which is a, another video to come. So I even, just for the purposes of uh, research you understand, crashed it uh, a good few times, just to make sure nothing happened. Every time it landed upside down, went onto this, Bent the antenna a couple of times, but it was all good. So um, I'm really happy with this uh, idea, uh, and I'd recommend it to anybody. Meantime, um, I sent the video of some white lines to Banggood, and they sent me a replacement one of these. So now I have two of them. Yay. Uh, but, you know, open mind, I guess. Um, th this one might be okay. Um, I know Bruce Simpson... Did a review on this and he liked it. Uh, my only concern is that more than 50% of the people that have bought one uh, tell me they've had a problem with it. Uh, and they're suggesting getting the Amway 200 instead, which looks like better quality. But um, at some point, I'll put this back in and I'll, I'll let you know if it, it works or not. But at the moment, I can't recommend these uh, based on the number of people that said they've had a problem and my own first problem, although this one might be fine. Uh, but it's only about four quid more for an Anway one, and I'm hearing great things about that. Okay. Bye-bye.